I know it's busy being involved in a health partnership and fundraising often takes a back seat, but it's important to have a strategy for your fundraising so that your good work can continue. I've been a grant donor and helped health partnerships fundraise and apply for grants. And I'm going to share with you my top tips for successful fundraising and how to manage it, even with limited time. There are three basic ways to get funds for your partnership. Gifts, grants and sales. Gifts are straightforward donations of money, whether from members of the public, organisations or wealthy individuals. There are many ways you can ask for gifts, from the traditional public charity bucket collections to sponsored challenge activities. With sponsored challenge events, find something that people really want to do, like a marathon, mountain climb or parachute jump. If you find a challenge that's organised by another company, all you need to do is to encourage people to take part and raise sponsorship money for you. As this income is often variable and unpredictable, aim for a regular flow of different fundraising activities. For challenge events, target people who have high incomes if you can, as they are likely to have high earning friends and colleagues who will sponsor them. Find willing friends or volunteers and delegate this type of fundraising to them. Encourage them to be creative. You can get grants from a variety of independent trusts and foundations and from public grant giving bodies. First, you need to research and find a funder who wants to support the type of work you do. You don't want to bother applying to a funder for anaesthetic equipment if they're only keen on funding school libraries. It's then helpful to prepare a short summary about your partnership and what you would do with a grant. Call funding bodies if you can and give them this summary. Listen carefully to their reaction. You may need to adjust what you ask for. Clear and concise summaries are often important for the start of grant application forms too. Be realistic. Don't apply for £500,000 if the largest grant you've ever handled before is £3,000. You need to build up, step by step. Be clear about the problem you are trying to tackle and how it affects local people. Use straightforward language and avoid technical medical details. Not many funders will be an expert in your field. You can generate income by selling something and using the profit, but you have to operate like a business to do this effectively. You need a product that can sell well, has a market and makes a profit after costs. You can also sell tickets to events such as charity dinners, balls, pub quizzes and concerts. But make sure you're likely to raise enough money to cover your overhead costs and create some profit or donations on top. You can help diversify your funding in less direct ways. Take advantage of any opportunity to promote your partnership in your personal network. That's family, friends, colleagues, neighbours and anyone else you know. You never know where it might lead. You mention your activities to a neighbour. He tells his son who works for a large company. The company makes an annual charity donation and they decide to donate to your partnership next year. Then it turns out that one of their directors is friends with a trustee of a grant foundation and you're invited to make an application for funds to them as well. It's the power of networks. To inspire people to donate, it's important to communicate effectively. An elevator pitch is a short description of who you are and what you want to do, and what you would say if you had a minute or two in a lift with a wealthy individual. Or what you might say briefly to a funder at a busy conference event. It needs to be concise, positive and passionate. Think about your audience. With the general public, give a broad overview and focus on describing the problem. For example, when my hairdresser asks me where I'm going on holiday this year, I say I'm planning a trip to Africa with the charity I work for. I explain that we support rural communities living in extreme poverty in Uganda, where women giving birth and children sick with malaria stay at home because people don't understand the risks and they can't afford transport to get to a health centre. I tell her that our charity helps educate these communities and provides emergency transport using motorbike ambulances, but that we need more support to help the whole region. However, an experienced overseas grant funder will likely know about the problem and the context, so focus on explaining your intervention and how cost effective your activities are. For a good summary or pitch, briefly say who you are, what the problem is, how you're addressing the problem or planning to, and what you've already achieved. 
finally, you need to get up to speed with online communication. If you don't have a website or blog page, you will likely be losing out to others who do. You also need to embrace social media. Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn are all ways of getting your partnership noticed and supported, potentially by people from all over the world. Communicate a unit cost that donated money can buy. The smaller the unit, the better. More people will feel able to make a difference with a donation. So, what now? Well, pause a moment. Sit down and plan your approach to fundraising. What mix of gifts, grants or sales income do you want to aim for in the next one to two years, say? Who can you call on to help with your fundraising efforts? This is your fundraising strategy. Well-targeted fundraising will expand your avenues of income and you can then expand the great work that you do. So good luck with your fundraising. <laughs>